Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Tailbone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing with good old Gardevoir EX, this deck that has been doing uh, decently well in post-rotation. Of course, it was one of the biggest losers from rotation by losing Rastep and by losing Shining Arcana, two very crucial pieces to really make the deck feel extremely powerful. Now it feels like a very uh, watered down version of Gardevoir. But don't get me wrong, Drifloon and Screamtail can dish a lot of damage with uh, the Heroescape, Luxuriescape, and Bravery Charm, so definitely still something to look out for. Of course, there's a nice variety with the Drifloon to be able to do a lot of damage. You can do as much as you want, basically, to one kill everything in the format. Sometimes you need a little bit of damage manipulation with the damage bump, uh, which can be important. Uh, the Luxurious Cape is also sort of a liability as well, and the deck is very susceptible to Lost Vacuum, but Drifloon, a very powerful attacker. Same for Screamtail, a very powerful attacker, and it's very nice to be able to snipe Pidgeys, Charmanders, because you don't immediately think about um, Denial uh, when it comes to Gardevoir, right, or Bench Threats, rather. And then we have Flutter Main as well, to be able to deny abilities from certain decks, which can be important, and does it has a decent attack and then we have Mimikyu as well which can sometimes wall a lot of different decks especially arc variants that don't always have a very specific answer to Mimikyu and you can actually attack with it and apply pressure and maybe so knock some of the little Pokemon that your opponent tries to use in order to bypass Mimikyu which is also very strong against Charizard EX decks. Now as far as the engine goes we have Arvin with Technical Machine Evolution. I can't emphasize how much Technical Machine Evolution really helps out this deck just searching for those skill lists, having those ready to go on your following turn to be able to draw extra cards. And that's why maybe there's an argument to choose to go second now with Cardiffor. I think choosing to go first is still fine, but it feels like the whole format now wants to go second because it's so aggressive. So you might as well choose second to slow down your opponent and open up the possibility for you to TM Evo into double Kirlia, which is pretty, pretty nice. Now, the last thing I want to point out here is the energy count. Eight psychic energy does feel a little low, in my opinion. I talk about this throughout the games, but eight energy does feel low. I feel like 10 would be my ideal number, but of course that comes at a cost. Flutter main perhaps would be one of the cards I would consider uh, getting rid of. Um, not so sure where I would find it, but I, I would definitely at least play nine. We're going to play with eight today, but I feel like after playing with Cardivore in the, in the last few weeks, nine seems like the ideal number or the minimum for me personally to feel comfortable and 10 would be my ideal number. Yeah, you know, with 10, I, you don't have any pricing issues. You, you're going to be finding them more often. Eight is very like, oh, right on the balance where you could potentially get a uh, boss and stalled at some point and they have to, to use your Turo, but then if it happens again, it, you could be problematic. So I feel like 10 would be my ideal number, but let's jump into some games and see how the deck fares. If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Post and Store for your online codes, 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming, and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab, then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market, and Dragon Shield. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyper Beam Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Lotai. Alright, so let's get started. We lose the coin flip, so we'll see what my opponent chooses. Um, going first with Cardi, never a bad thing as long as your hand cooperates. They do let me go first. So we'll be fine, hopefully. Nah. Decent-ish start. If there was Mirage Step, this would be a pretty decent start. Just get another Ralts, then you're fine. Because there's no more Mirage Step now, however. This could be problematic. All right. We see Pidgey. Most likely, it's Charizard, right? However, could also be Pidgey Control. So, based on the sleeves, I could say it's Charizard with a certain degree of um, confidence. Did price one Drifloon and not the Screamtail, which is great. Um, one Iodo, one Arvin priced, and then energies. No energy priced, which is really good. 
All right, so not too bad of price cards overall um, from the quick overlook I did. Let's see what happens right here. And yeah, I mean, Guardi have been doing decent at tournaments. Guardi so far has been uh, pretty consistent. So, you yeah, know, I think we're in for a, for a good time with Guardi now. That heavy ball definitely makes me a little nervous that this is actually going to be Snorlax or Pidgeot Control rather than Charmander because there isn't like Charizard decks don't usually play Heavy Ball. However, we see the Charizard, so all good. You know? Having a crazy hair day today. <laughs> all right. So we do the Pidgey Call for Family. Uh, establishes the road dumb so that they can use the first stone they have in their hand, which we will be taking away. Very, very nice top deck on the puffin. I think I'm just gonna go for the Ralts Ralts. Don't see why not. And we're gonna go ahead and Iono get ourselves into a better hand. Uh, no TM Devo and no Kirlia. Oof. That is generally really bad. Okay, I'm not gonna bench the Drivlin Jet. I think I'm honestly just gonna attach and retreat. So this now puts me one turn behind, which is not ideal. Cardi is a comeback deck and will continue to be a comeback deck whilst you set up. They try to trade favorably, so it's not the end of the world, but definitely not a great situation to be in. All right. So they do have the rare candy. That Pidgeot could actually take a prize card here without needing the Charizard, which is a little scary, only a little. But never mind. The Charizard EX actually just outright happens. Now, this will be interesting though. If my opponent just outright retreats into Charizard EX and attacks me with that, I could actually memory skip onto the Charizard, which honestly would be pretty hilarious. What an Iono. <laughs> what? My opponent hasn't even used Quick Search. And off of my Iono, they got Rare Candy Pidgeot, Rare Candy Charizard, Clean Research into another Rare Candy Charizard. And they still have... Wow. <laughs> that is insane. Now, this is obviously a waste because now they, um, they didn't attach energies there. So... That's just like playing cards because you can, not because you need to. I'm wondering if I should Arvin <laughs> for the TM Evo or if I should just Iono again. I think I'm going to go for the TM Evo play because I really don't want to uh, lose out on one more. Well, the thing is, I might just lose a Curly as well. And the Luxurious Cave is just really bad overall. Dang. All right. I mean, I'm committed now, but definitely not ideal. Just way too slow, right? I can't believe I missed every Curlia off of that previous Iono and or Ultra Wolf, right? To just not hit anything, so. If you're my opponent, I did bench the Drifloon because that's sort of a distraction to my opponent. Uh, best case scenario, they just go after the Drifloon instead of going after a Curlia. I think the correct play would be to go after a Curlia, but we'll see. Did they even quick search last turn? Yeah, they do go after a Curlia, so making the correct play right there. This is a difficult situation though. Because Bravery Charm gets Drifloon to 120. Oh, and they have the Lost CD, come on. <laughs> okay, well, that's really bad. All right. Do I have the Ultra Wall? Will that help me at all? Nope. Thing is, I need the Luxurious Cape to aim for a KO. I also only have four energies. 
This is not looking good at all. Well, they do only have one Charizard powered up. So maybe I just go for it. They will be able to take a knockout, however. But there's nothing I can do about that. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm gonna commit. I don't see any other good situation for me here. <clears throat> no Kirli again, come on. <sighs> Just awful, awful stuff. All right, well, on to the next one. All right, so we lost a coin flip once again. Probably gonna end up going first once again, which is not the end of the world, as long as you get some Kirlis out. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like that is the hardest thing ever. <clears throat> All right. So our opponent will go first this time around. Okay, we have Arvin, we have TM Evo, we have Poffin for an, uh, because we have energy. So so far so good. We even get a Mulligan. So uh, are we up against the same person? No, different sleeves. They chose to go first. So just same deck. Right, Charizard Pidgeot, which is to be expected, one of the best decks, and it was really cool that you all enjoyed the um, the thumbnail made that I commissioned for the video. Um, hopefully, most of these new videos will have those sort of different thumbnails just to make the channel stand out a little bit more. Um, they definitely have not translated to a massive amount of clicks like I always wish, but so far, um, a lot of positive comments, so happy with the reaction. All right. <clears throat> All righty. Rotom Beam. Just an instant charge, so honor roll makes start for, opponent, for my opponent, knows they won't be threatened. Uh, very nice top deck on that Ralts. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our Poffin and our technical machine evolution to make sure that we get our Curlias out, except we did prize a Ralts, which is fine, not the end of the world. I uh, might just go for, for the Drifflin. Start applying pressure already. I have the Screamtail in hand. My opponent um, could maybe, whoops, not anticipate, and therefore I could end up sniping a their only Charmander or whatever, which could be nice. We'll see. So double clearly evolved, picture perfect turn. Uh, fourth route would be the only thing that <clears throat> that works out here. All right. We'll see what happens. They have the body body puffin, but any advantage they could have possibly had by going first is now completely gone, which I'm happy about. Uh, 60 HP <laughs> Pokemon Go Charmanders. Quirky decision for sure. All right, double Charmander could lead me to snipe the Pidgey instead of the Charmanders. Whichever they only have one of, that's what I'm gonna focus on. Obviously, it would be preferable for them to choose Charmander as the one-off because then um, or like they not either a choice or just they just lack the option uh, because then you definitely have another free turn whilst they set up an attacker right but denying the pitch it is always nice if I could deny the pitch it plus I don't know their incoming huge hand that would be really nice <clears throat> no supporter plate yet so they might be holding an Arvin and might be debating on playing it for uh, Ray Canyon next turn. We'll see, but best case scenario would be very nice. Ralts, <clears throat> Cobble Energy Surprise is really, really bad news. So trying to unlock 
our price card here and unlock an energy would be pretty fantastic. I really like that Iono. I also have in rare candy into the late for this Ralts, which could be <clears throat> could be decent. I'm really gonna bench this Grimtail. Rare candy into the late. Is that ever worth it? I'm gonna say no, not yet. So I'm just gonna Iono away my opponent's huge hand. I get six new cards plus two more off of Curlia. I find Ultra Ball, which is pretty fantastic in order to get the Gardevoir EX going to Energy Prize, we already know. So that could complicate things just a little bit, but we'll manage. All right, here's the Gallade once again. No rare candy to go with it, however, but that is okay. We're gonna grab our Gardevoir EX and we are going to snipe that poor pit team. I would have loved, 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 loved to have another Kulia for backup here, but it is what it is. This is a pretty strong start against my opponent's pretty underwhelming one. Could snipe a Charmander, then I only have to potentially deal with one. Charizard, but I think overall in the grand scheme of things, going after the Pidgey makes a little bit more sense because then their deck will be weaker and weaker um, after every Iono. Did not unlock an energy, however, so getting a knockout on a Charizard could be a little problematic, but we'll manage. Uh, we also have Mimikyu as a way to slow them down quite a bit. Um, maybe I could have, no, I don't think I could have won the previous game by using, maybe they were too far ahead. They didn't have space for anything. No, they did have a Charmander, Never mind. All right, so Charmeleon, Harvin, extra Charmander. We're gonna see the Charizard. Worst case scenario would be for that to happen through, for that to happen and face off against a counter catcher to take down the Gardevoir EX. That would not be very nice for my opponent. It would give me a free knockout still, which is not the worst. So they could have just grabbed the Charizard right off of that Forest Seal Stone. Don't know how standard their list is going to be. <clears throat> All right, I think Counter Gatcher or KO Guard of RX is a pretty strong play here for my opponent. You see the retreat. And I see another attachment a, a Nest Ball. Probably for a Pidgey. No, just for the Radiant Charizard. All right, so two guard hands for my opponent. Another Nest Ball, never mind. That could be the Pidgey. As the last card counter catcher. No, it's mana fee, okay. So maybe they prize the other Pidgey. Maybe they only play one. Alright. No counter catcher KO and card of X though. So they do need a lot. 30 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So I need this to have 11 damage counters. That's six energies, which is quite a lot, to be honest. Two cards in hand. Definitely would rather not Iono. That Arvin is pretty cool. <clears throat> All right. I think I have exactly exact knockout thanks to that Arvin top deck, which is pretty crazy. I believe I have exact knockout. So I want to go. All right. I'm going to start with refinement away the puffin. Okay, very nice. Then I'm gonna go refinement away the leak headquarters. There's only one energy left in the deck. I might end up drawing it, but yeah, there it is. That's all right. We're gonna do this. Thanks to the damage pump. I'm gonna be able to take this KO all thanks to the damage pump, I think. So. Oh, did I mess up? I need to discard the energy. I messed up. Didn't I? 
No, I did not. I think I'm still okay. But that was definitely an oversight on my part. All right. So I think I didn't mess up, but I might be wrong. All right. So if I go Psychic and Braids five energies to the active, that is 300 damage. I could have just simplified things and used the hero's cape. Honestly, maybe that's what I should have done, but that was almost a cost mistake. The most efficient way to do it would have been to just um, discard the Psychic and then Psychic recharge to the Ralts. All right, so I can't attach more energies to the Drifflin. I can, however, attach energy to the Guard of War. I could only unlock one, right? And then I'm gonna damage bump, 10 damage. And that is a perfect knockout on the Charizard. 330 damage. I almost messed that up. Silly Pablo, silly table mon. Real good, all right. Unlocking an energy here would be very useful. And a Curlia, fantastic. Possibly the two best prizes I could have unlocked right here. My opponent immediately promotes the Charmeleon. We could see another Charizard, definitely fair. That hero escape in hand is actually not ideal, but I can always body catch for a, an Arvin for a Nest Ball. So I think I can never miss the KO right here. We do see an Arvin. The Arvin could lead to a lost vacuum, which means we just lose the Drifflin immediately. And my opponent gets possibly two price cards if they have the Charizard. However, they chose Ultra Ball and Maximum Belt. Probably gonna be discarding the Maximum Belt. <clears throat> and I mean, if they choose to use a Charizard to knock out this Drifloon when it has 10 HP left, as opposed to going for the Lost Vacuum, I am perfectly okay with that because it's only one price card. Yeah, If they had Charizard plus Lost Vacuum, it could be two price cards, but we'll see. We shall see. Ultra Ball. So taking their time trying to figure out what to discard. It's gotta be the maximum belt. And then one other card. We'll see what they choose. Maximum belt actually now lets Charizard EX, I mean Radiant Charizard knock out Gardevoir EX with any prior damage. Whereas before it used to be they needed six damage counters. Oh, and they already had what? They already had the Lost Vacuum in their hand. So what's the other card? It might be a Draw Supporter. If it's Counter Catcher, I'm okay with that because then the Drifflin survives. Lost Vacuum is now useless. So, interesting decision. Wow, that's a lot of energies. Five... So they're playing at least eight fire energy. So right off the bat, we know that it's not a standard Charizard deck, which it's a, it's fine. Yeah, it's no big deal. <clears throat> All right. So we need backup Drifflin right here, right now. All right. Well, or I can just top take the Arvin. Sure. <laughs> that works. Let's just go for it. And if the Drivelin is not available, which it is, um, if it hadn't been, then I would grab Superod to make sure I could get, um, have a chance off of the next six cards at finding the Drivelin. So, but we had already played Heavy Ball, so we knew it was available. All right. So now all I need to do is get 12 damage counters on this. Drifloon probably should have played the buff into thin because counter catcher is just going to be completely useless uh, in case it played some sort of escape rope or whatever it is. doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Pretty sure this game is close to being locked up. And all right, we're going to hero escape the Drifloon and we're going to psychic embrace. I'm going to attach one here to retreat. And then the rest to the Drifflin. Then we're going to retreat and we're going to attach a sixth energy to the Drifflin. 
Now, once again, we are, oh no, I'm gonna free two energies. I was thinking, like if the energies st were stuck here, we would be in a situation once again where we would end up losing, um, losing the game in case they uh, played a boss. However, never mind, that is not the case because, oh no, it is the case actually. Because I need that sixth energy here. So then if I don't unlock the energy and they go boss or counter catcher, I could actually lose because I only play eight energies right here. I'm gonna evolve to guarantee that I have a supporter. I'm just gonna give one last check through the deck. I do have a boss, which is nice <clears throat> because I might need something small to KO next turn. But if I don't unlock the energy, that could potentially be a big problem right here. It could be a problem. And all right, I unlocked the energy and the Luxurious Cape. So my prizes were pretty pinpoint accurate. Very nice. Luxurious Cape allows me to go super out, ultra roll back the Drifflin, power up and do the exact same thing to knock out a clean Charizard EX. Uh, Charmander doesn't KO my Drifflin. Radiant Charizard does, but my opponent can't go toe to toe, right? They have to evolve into another Charizard EX, which seems real difficult without a Patriot in play. Not impossible, right? I wonder if they have, okay. No, they're just gonna retreat into a Ratsard. But then like this is a 100% game, right? Like the Guard of Wars right there, I'm gonna have the energies, the game's over. So what's the point, right? What's the point? All right. So I'm just going to promote the Guard of War and then do my best to attach as quickly as I can. And that's going to be the game. So hopefully my opponent doesn't concede here and the game bogs as it tends to do when you're in the middle of Psychic Embrace. Uh, otherwise, props to my opponent for not conceding immediately. I'm just trying to go as fast as I can. And there we go. Miracle Force for the knockout pretty good game for showcasing guardy uh, that snipe on the pidgey i think was pretty crucial to just slow down my opponent you saw in the previous game how my opponent just got everything out with the pidget and i didn't and then when they didn't have pidget and i was able to have uh, some sort of response then the game is completely different so can guard of war compete not so sure um do need to play with it more. I feel like nine is the right number of energies, although 10 is probably what I would love to have. Eight just feels like very low and any energy you end up prizing or two especially puts you in a lot of trouble, especially if you have to stretch for a big knockout with Drivlin, then something like a boss could be game ending um, if your opponent detects that they can pull that off. So always be on the lookout of how many energy, energy Guardi plays. And if you're playing Guardi yourself, you need to be aware of that possibility. And how can you compensate that through deck building? There's also Professor Tour, of course, that would have helped to unlock yourself from that. But in case that's priced as well, or in case you're not playing it, then it could lead to some trouble. So just some food for thought, all right? Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this matches and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.